Hey everyone, in today's video I just want to give you my tips on solo filming at weddings. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like this video. I release a video every Monday discussing um, anything video related, mainly wedding films and sort of giving my tips, uh, what I do um, and it's also documenting sort of my own wedding video production company at the same time. So I've been self-employed for a year and a good year and a half now, so I just got a text. So I've been self-employed now for about a year and a half. I've um, been filming weddings for a few years now. And, well, with the whole COVID-19, um, I'm literally exporting my last wedding video now. And my next film, my next weddings aren't in, until a couple of months. And they could be postponed. But every Monday, I'm releasing a video sort of giving my tips and reviews on gear. And it is all what I use. So I've got my website, nickfinch.co.uk. On there, I've got all the kit that I use. Uh, I mainly use a Canon C200. I've got all my audio gear. I've got uh, discount to services that I use, such as Soundstripe. And just things that can help you out. So go check it out. So my first tip for solo shooting is definitely time management. And this is throughout the whole day. So depending on what you offer as your packages, and remember this sort of throughout the whole of this discussion now, you want to get to bride prep, and it would probably be bride prep that you're going to first. Um, I would say at least two hours before. I like to get there a little bit earlier if the bride doesn't mind. And that's the key because sometimes you don't want them, you just be hanging around um, with all the brides and bridesmaids sort of getting ready. Um, so I, I, I'm definitely not there before hair and makeup arrive. That will be, um, you know, I always sort of get there for that sort of time. Um, because I offer a highlight film and also a sort of a longer feature film. Um, so yeah, time management there is definitely a key. And, you know, I've got another video relating to sort of um, what to ask your brides and grooms sort of in a pre-meeting. And... That's exactly it. See what time um, they're getting ready. Know the ceremony time. Uh, time management wise, I would get to the ceremony at least half an hour before it starts. This gives you um, a chance to, obviously depending where it is. So if it's at a church, it gives you a chance to meet the vicar at a venue. Gives a chance to just chat to the registrar. And talk about your positioning, like churches sometimes don't like you to move. Um, so it's just like you could chat with them, sort of build a rapport with them. And I also like, it also gives me a chance to film the groom because he's always there, usually an hour before. Um, film guests arriving because I know in my feature film, I like to have a good five minutes before the ceremony starts. So that sort of bride prep. Groom prep if I've gone to it. I'll get back to that one in a minute. Um, and then sort of the build up at the church. And it gives a nice story. You, know, you can tell a nice story with that. And that's sort of my style. And that's what I like to do. Um, groom prep wise. I only attend if on two occasions. One, if they've booked my hire package that I have a second shooter with me. So in this video, we can rule that one out because I'm talking about solo shooting. Um, but all my wedding films are usually me. I've, I had, I've introduced that package this year and a couple of months ago, I had my first one of filming with a second shooter and I've got one in August as well that requires a second shooter. Um, and if they're getting ready at the same venue, then I will say I can get to groom prep because I won't leave bride prep um, to go off half an hour one way, film a bit of the groom getting ready and come back. Um, even though there's usually a bit of a lull, I, I, I won't um, lie there, especially if you're new to wedding filmmaking. Um, 
bride prep can be a bit boring. You know, you're there for a few hours. Um, so there can be a lull. So so if the, if the groom isn't far, you could sneak out then. Um, but then always chat. So it goes back to this is all time management. Chat with uh, the bride, see when she's, and the makeup artist, see when she's having her makeup done. Because, um, you know, that does take a while and you want to sort of get those, uh, the like the final shots, you know, the, like the touch up of makeup. So, um, you know, those shots go into my highlights. And in your highlights, here's a good tip. Do not put um, the bride in without her makeup done. In the highlights, because that's what they'll share online with their friends and family. That's what you want them to be looking their best in. So don't put any, um, in your highlights video, any shots of the bride without any makeup on. Um, so again, time management, just chat with them if you do need to pop out. I usually sometimes take the time to get aerial shots, um, especially if I'm at, if they if bride prep's at the venue, this is a great opportunity to pop out for half an hour. Um, I get, I go with uh, my, my monopod and my camera, get sort of external shots, get the drone out, get the aerial shots. And then it's like, it's just ticking those off. You know, you know they're done for the rest of the day. Um, if the room's being set up, I sometimes like to film it being set up sort of adds a nice feel to the day especially in sort of the in the feature film in the first five minutes a nice build up again um and once the room's ready as well you can go film that that's always nice to have shots of the final room and again this all depends on your style you know some people might not even include that in their in their films but this is sort of what i like to do in in my style um and time management goes throughout the whole day. So you want to know the key times of um, bride prep, groom prep, ceremony, um, confetti. When does that happen? Is it happening straight after the ceremony? Um, because if you're solo shooting and you've got two cameras, three cameras, you've got mics dotted around the room, um, especially in churches, the vicar wants to sort of pack up quick and get out of there and lock the doors and you don't want all your kit in there. So you need to know, are they having a confetti shot straight away? Um, you know, you can, when you say straight, it can usually be like five minutes before the guests get out. You know, you can let the photographer arrange that and just say to the photographer, right, don't actually start the confetti um, until I'm there. So you can literally gather all your gear and sort of just get out of the church. If it's at the venue, usually they're packing it up to turn the room around, but you can sort of move all your stuff to one side. Um, and obviously, security-wise, you don't want any of your stuff being stolen, so try and get it all in your bag. But I'm not, not saying um, this won't happen to you, but out of all my weddings I've filmed, I've had no one actually take any equipment, and I'm always checking on it, even if I have got my bag stored, stored away somewhere. Um, then you might be going off for a couple photo shoots, um, and this, this is all timings you need to remember. So, so we'll just carry that on. So photo shoots, um, then it usually goes into their sit down meal. Sometimes speeches are before, uh, sometimes they're after, um, cutting the cake and then first dance. They're the sort of key timings that you want to know. And it can be quite, um, quite stressful. Like the la literally the last wedding I did, it was, bride was getting ready at her mum's house, uh, church wedding, all the guests went to the venue, we went straight to, um, we went straight to the couple's photo shoot down the beach, back in, and I wanted to obviously get the um, room set up before anyone was in there. Um, the photographer, there was three of them on the day, so you had one photographer organising a group shot that, again, I wanted to get a shot for that, and the other photographers were already getting the room before the guests walked in, so I had to quickly go around getting shots of that. Um, my style, I don't have, ev I don't go into all the details with everything, but it just sets a nice bit of storytelling, uh, moving the scene on, sort of getting the room set, having the room set up. Um, so these are all things that you need to sort of time manage and these are shots that you want to get that match your style because if brides and grooms and couples have 
booked you because they've seen your style, you can't then change, you can't not put it in because they might have liked how you put it in, if you get what I mean. Um, so just, just time management really. And the best thing is just to have a pre-meeting, discuss everything. And if you've got any problems on the day, chat with the bride and groom, just let them know, chat with the photographer. The photographer should uh, be there helping you. They're, they're worried about time management as well. So, um, but like I say, if you're just getting, if you're new to it, you're a bit nervous about solo shooting, all weddings are different. I've had it where all same venue, after the wedding, they, the photographer's doing all the, the the family and friends. So I get like the key family, get the groomsmen, but then I'm not dealing with that. I'll be getting candid shots of other guests. I can then get the room set up. Then um, I can get my ready for the speeches. Um, but sometimes the speeches are after food, even better. So they all go in. Then you've got a bit of time to um, set all your microphones up, um, set your cameras up plug into the soundboard um, if, if the venue's got one. So time management, that's step number one, uh, tip number one. Uh, number two, audio gear is just as important as your cameras. So um, make sure you've got backups of your backups. I like to mic up the groom, the registrar, I have mics sort of dotted around near the near the there's a table at the front. If there's someone doing a reading, maybe get a mic on them uh, if you've got a spare one, or just have some sort of audio recorder at a little like if they're gone to the side for a little table, um, just have one there. Um, you know, when it comes to the speeches, I love to plug into the soundboard directly. Um, mic up the groom, the father of the bride. It all depends on how much gear you have, obviously. Um, obvious, the more you have, the better. So if you have lapel mics that you can put on every single person who's doing a speech, even better. Um, I have mics on the table, just like audio recorders on the table, but they will pick up any sound. You know, If, it, if they pick up a drink and the groom puts it down, you hear the thumps. Um, so you want backups of your backups. Ideally, I like the one where I plug directly into the soundboard. Um, and I always have a few cables with me, which if you check out nickfinch.co.uk, uh, my kit's on there. You can see the cables. I've got a video on how I plug into the soundboard and record into the, my um, Zoom H5. Um, so I've got some great tips there. Um, but audio, having great audio gear is just as important as... The cameras because if you've got clean audio you can cut I come, I'll come to the cameras in a minute but just having that clean audio helps with with the visual um, video wise like I said before I have um, I put aerial footage in as well so if you had a chance um, a lot of time at the ceremony especially at church I might have um, drones sort of rotating round and that helps when cutting to different scenes in the church. Um, and camera wise, I would say I have at least two cameras. I've done a video about how I use one camera only um, and sort of cut between um, each side of the ceremony and just make it look a bit more interesting than rather being stuck in sort of one spot. Um, the video that I'm about to send to the bride and groom, unfortunately, the, the vicar did say you can only stand in one spot. Um, but lucky I had two cameras, one pointing at the groom, uh, sorry, at the bride, and one at the back, wide shot. And the photographer was great uh, because they had three. They had two round near the back. And she said she stayed underneath my camera um, at not, to, not to get my shot, which was just really nice of her because I've seen... Uh, I've, I've had it before and I've seen other people where the, the photographer hasn't always stood at the back but that time that you want to literally use that other shot because you might, might be moving around um, the photographer is in the way so um, that can be a bit annoying uh, but this is all things you discuss with the bride and groom and the couple that you know you operate with mainly two cameras um, and I've had it before where I go, well, if you want three or four cameras, you can go to this other package, makes your ceremony a little bit better. 
Um, so you're trying to you know upsell it there, but literally let them know sort of the limitations that you're under. Um, but for me as a solo shooter, the ceremony is always the most stressful stressful part. So to relieve the stress, it's get there you know half an hour before, have at least two cameras, have all your audio set up. And just, just try and keep things simple at the ceremony as well. Just, just keep things simple. Um, and same when it comes to filming the speeches. I have two cameras. Um, one sort of a wide shot of the table. And the other one, whoever's basically talking, I have quite a, a mid shot, sometimes close up of, of that as well. I used to cut away to like audio, um, guest reactions and things like that. But now I um, literally just focus, just keep the camera pointing at um, whoever's talking. And only if they've said something and the bride might have reacted, I would cut to my other camera. Um, that's usually the only time. And yeah, I just like to, like to keep things simple. And as long as the audio is on point, because in my highlights films, that's what I like to use a lot of. So that'll be overlaid sort of when the bride's getting ready. Um, and cut back to the groom talking at the, the speeches and just, you know, you, you might do the same yourself. So as long as your audio is on point, um, it can make a bad video look good. Um, and they're mainly the key points to really solo shooting. Um, footage wise, whilst you're capturing, I like to film... Uh, one, I like to always make sure I've got enough footage. But two, I'll literally shoot to edit now. Now I've done a lot, I know my style. Um, it makes editing a lot easier. Um, I can think of, I'm already, when I'm filming things, I'm already visualising it in my head as well when it comes to the editing. Um, and I know I'll be like, yeah, use that shot. Um, so make sure you know your packages that you've got that you've got enough footage for that. So even if for me, even if a um, a couple book me on my lower package, which is just the highlights, there is an option to upgrade to um, the feature film at a later date because I'm recording it anyway. So make sure you've got enough footage for that feature film if that's what you you know your packages do. Um, and that's about it really, just enjoy yourself. Other little tips would be, um, make sure you've got to change your clothes. <laughs> Trousers can um, rip. Uh, make sure you're drinking plenty of water and eating throughout the day as well when you can. Um, and just enjoy it, get on with the photographer. If you get on with the photographer, that, that's great. Um, I got on really well with the three of them. And they were a family as well, so I, was, I, was, I literally felt part of their family. Um, and their son is going to assist me on, well, he was going to come on my May weddings, but they've all been postponed. So hopefully he'll be on my June, if the June wedding's going ahead. Um, and I might use him as a second shooter if he's sort of good enough in the future. Because it's all about, um, you want to build professional relationships, um, and it's always... It is good to know if you do need a second shooter that there's someone there you can rely on as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit of a, me rambling on, uh, but they're literally my tips on um, solo shooting at a wedding. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Wait, there's one more thing. I. With this bit of quiet time, I've, I've mentioned in my last week's video, I've started a family vlog, um, the Finch family. So I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I've got loads of videos coming. I've got five now. I literally filmed most days, um, but at least I've now got a massive edit um, backlog. That once I've done it, now I've done this. Excuse me. Now once I've done this wedding film, um, I've got a bit of time to do that. So. Go check them out. See you next week.